Hi guys, Sifu Adelik here, uh, Master Instructor at Kung Fu at Home and Niagara Kung Fu Academy. And I want to talk to you today about um, your at-home training. A lot of people ask, I see online, the question comes up a lot, whether you can learn Kung Fu at home, a home study on your own. And a lot of people sometimes say dead against it. No, you cannot. You have to have a teacher in front of you, blah, blah, blah. And um, I think that's a little bit of an extreme statement to say, no, that's not possible. Of course you can learn at home. Um, you can train Kung Fu at home. Kung Fu means that skill uh, you acquire after time and sacrifice. That's pretty much it. So as soon as you stand up and you're throwing some punches with the intent to get better and you're sacrificing some other things that you'd rather be doing to develop that art form, well then you're doing Kung Fu. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, so you can't really argue with that but the next part of that argument is, is whether you can learn it well. And that really depends on the quality of information you get. So my goal is if you're going that road and you're doing a lot of uh, development on your own, my goal is to try to give you good information uh, to make sure that you're not doing um, anything that would injure you um, or have any kind of negative consequence. So I want to talk to you today about conditioning, conditioning the body, because this is often uh, something people do very, very wrong. And the problem is they don't really realize it until it's too late, until they do it incorrectly for years and years. And that's when a lot of the, the negative, um, you know, uh, consequences of that kind of training um, come out. So in, in traditional Kung Fu, uh, one very important thing we train for is longevity, right? Meaning that you're training for many, many years. You should be keeping your body in a really good, healthy state. Um, the, one of the purposes of Kung Fu is to, is to keep you in good shape for a long period of time. Um, not just, you know, put you in good shape today at the expense of tomorrow. And if you're training things incorrectly a lot of times you won't know it until it wears a certain part of the body down and like I said then you know it before it's too late so a lot of times we do this when it comes to conditioning um, toughening up the body for different strikes and things like that and the best way to teach us is to kind of break it down into two schools of thought. And given there's a lot of gray area in between, you have a type of conditioning that's more hard style conditioning and a type of conditioning that's more soft style conditioning. So. The hard style conditioning would be like um, a scene in Kickboxer when Van Damme goes to kick a tree and he kicks it and he kicks it until it falls over, right? So that's hard style conditioning. When you smash your shin on a tree repeatedly, um, it's not going to be good for you. As, as cool as it looks and it's very cinematic, it's actually quite stupid because what will happen is you're going to have a lot of uh, permanent nerve damage in that leg. Now I know, you know, you'd want to deaden the nerves in that leg um, so you can hit people with it, but that's not actually healthy for you. There's a difference between between um, strengthening uh, the bone structure so it can it can withstand uh, force. There's a difference between that and then just deadening the nerves so you don't feel the force, right? So we don't want to just deaden nerves all the time when we can strengthen up the bone density instead. And that's more the goal of, of what we call soft style conditioning. Um, so hard style conditioning, like hitting something really hard, like a rock or a tree or a brick, a lot of people do that um, usually when they're when they're younger and, and not so wise, um, because it seems really cool. But the reality is, if you're if you're punching something very hard repeatedly, and you are deadening the nerves in your fist, so you won't feel it. But the downside of that is you're going to have permanent nerve damage in your hand, and you're going to lose a lot of the dexterity you need in your fingers to function in a regular society, especially today when we have to type and we have to text, we need the dexterity in our fingers. And not only that, um, a lot of advanced techniques in certain styles of Kung Fu have um, a lot of pressure point striking and chin on and stuff like that, joint locking, and you need sensitivity and dexterity in your fingers to be able to perform those properly because a lot of them are about sensitivity, not just, not just brute strength, right? So you need to make sure that you, you don't damage your hands so you can't use them properly, right? So although hard stock conditioning is, it seems really cool, if we do it over a long period of time, you'll notice that uh, you'll lose that dexterity. Not only that, your hands will look callous and disgusting too, so no one's gonna wanna shake hands with you. When you, you lean towards soft style conditioning, it's, um, it takes a lot, a lot longer and it, it takes a lot of patience, which is why for a lot of people it's not favorable because everyone wants results right now. But a uh, softer style of conditioning is instead of, you know, trying trying to deaden the nerves in the fist, for example, just to have a little light bit of contact on the fist. Not so it's painful, 
but just so it's um, it's constant and ongoing contact. And what that does is over over a greater amount of time, it's going to increase the bone density in the knuckles, and therefore the conditioning is deep inside the bone. It's not seen. Your hands aren't callous that way, and you don't lose the dexterity in your fingers, which you're going to need, right? So when you're conditioning, think about that: what you're striking and what your goal is. And if you want to be able to train today, so you can train tomorrow, um, go for that that long-term approach, right? Don't smash something so it hurts to deaden your nerves, but instead try to find ways to condition soft over time. And a lot of times in the forms, it, when you see Kung Fu forms, a lot of times you see them make contact um, with their own hand. And that's the idea, is that's not painful, but over a long period of time, in years and years of form training, that bone is going to become more dense um, without deadening the nerves and um, and making any kind of permanent damage. I know a lot of, a lot of guys I run into that have done uh, hard styles before, they have weird bumps and cricks and every time they move their hand it pops because there's something not right in there anymore from uh, from over conditioning or hard style conditioning. So keep that in mind. You want to, if, if you're, you're looking to do more traditional Kung Fu and you want to um, you know you want to make longevity a part of that, um, be careful when you're when you're conditioning. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you find this useful and valuable. And if you would like more information, uh, more, more tips like this about at-home training and how to make the most of it, then just uh, click on the link below this video and I'll email you some stuff. I've got uh, a little uh, week-long e-course where I email you some lessons every day that you can practice in the morning. So check that out. It's totally free and it'll be useful for you uh, also. And then if you're interested in long-term training, check out my inner chamber program at kungfuathome.com. I'll talk to you soon.